souls are even set free. Now, Lord, we pray that you open down my eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. I'm yours, Lord. I'm yours, Lord. Everything I am, everything I'm not. Take me now, use me as an empty vessel before a full fountain. Fill my cup tonight. Let it overflow. We thank you for what you've done. And Lord, we're going to keep praising you right now for what you're getting ready to do. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Somebody ought to say something. My, my, my brothers and sisters, as we continue this week of being revived, renewed, refreshed, regenerated uh, in these days of sharing in revival, I, I, I have discovered that in all of our lives, many of us tonight can testify that no matter how saved we think we are, we have experienced some time, some trouble, some trial, some temptation in our life that we really could not find words to describe. Then there have been days in our lives when our situation seemed to get us down, discouraged, and even feeling defeated. And we said to ourselves, I don't know what to do or even what to say. Can I, can I encourage you tonight to know that it is in those times that we find ourselves questioning, really wondering, am I really a Christian? We, we start having uh, questions with ourselves, asking ourselves, uh, is it really worth me going to church, giving my time, my, my talents, giving my thoughts to God? Because it seems the more I embrace God, the more I trust him, the more I take him at his word, I find myself taking personal inventory of my life. It is because, brothers and sisters, often we keep finding ourselves at a point of silence, not, not really finding words to explain what I'm going through. And I've discovered this in those times that we must come to the realization, we must realize that I've been through too much yes, sir. to be silent. Yes. Listen, that, that's really what the psalmist shares with us in these first two verses because this 107th psalm is the 14th psalm of praise. Yes. Here we find Israel is commanded to praise God, to speak, to thank God for his past deliverance from captivity. The psalmist is reflecting, he's remembering, he's rejoicing because God had brought them out of Egypt and now into Canaan. And the psalmist requests for them, he says, listen, you, you ought to have something to say. You, you ought to be able to give God thanks for what he's done in your life. So the summit simply encourages us tonight that if we've been redeemed, you ought to have something, something to say. This psalm, this psalm, Psalm 105 through Psalm 107 is really opening with a call of praise. Now let me run and tell you tonight, first of all, that the reason you ought to have something to say is because the psalmist said, let me remind you that you have a right to say something. Yeah. All right. To those of us tonight that have ever uh, had an encounter with the police department, they, they, they'll tell you you have a right yes, to remain silent. Yeah. Anything you say will be used against you in a court of law. Now, now that, that's the police, but I've discovered when you're saved that you're sanctified and you're secure about what God has done for you, then you can say you have a right to speak. You have a right to say something because anything you say is going to help you in 
your life. Yeah, yeah. You, see, you might better tell your neighbor you need to say something. Because the psalmist begins, he begins tonight with a very intense word. He says, oh, oh give oh. thanks yeah. unto the Lord. Right. Listen, I don't need to drop this. I don't want to push it tonight. But how many of us have ever had an old moment? Uh -huh. well, Divine goodness yes, carries 
along with it some mercy. Yeah. Matter of fact, Psalms 23 and 6 says, Surely, yeah. goodness and mercy yeah. shall follow me all the days of my life. Yeah. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Listen, we ought to thank God for his goodness. Yes. But then we ought to thank him for his mercy. Yes, sir. Because mercy right. is God holding back yes, sir. what we deserve. Yes, and many of us tonight realize that it has not been our goodness or our greatness that we made it thus far. But because God kept on releasing his mercy, we have made it through the storm, through, through sickness, through, through sorrow, through situations beyond our control. Somebody need to shout, thank God for mercy. Listen, God had mercy on us, church, even when we didn't deserve When we faltered, when we failed, when we fear, even when our faith was shaken, the Lord still had mercy on us. Yeah. Listen, let me remind you again. Uh, we have a call to say something. And can I tell you? You can't be silent. When you look at the Lord's goodness and his mercy. But not only, not only does he give us a reminder uh, that we can say something, but secondly, let me submit to you tonight. He says, you've got something to say because he makes a request for you to say something. Yeah. I, how do you say that, Reverend? Well, it's in the text. Uh -huh. The request is, he said, let the redeemed yeah. of the Lord Said so. Yeah. Now, this word redeem mm -hmm. means to make something acceptable in spite, watch this, of its negative qualities. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. I discovered tonight that the redeem yeah. are those of us right. who know how to keep it moving uh -huh. when everything else around oh, us has man. stopped. Yeah, right. yeah. The redeemed are those who can praise God in every situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18 says, In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God concerning, concerning you. Yeah. Here the psalmist gives us the authority. For those of us who have been redeemed by the Lord, yes, we have a request mm -hmm. to say something. Yeah, yeah. Listen, the redeemed are in a category by themselves. Oh, right, right. The redeemed uh -huh. yeah. are in a class. All by themselves. See, when you've been redeemed, mm -hmm. you've got authority mm -hmm. to say something. Watch this. No matter where you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. All right. All right. You, you don't have to wait yeah. to get to Bethel. Sure. Mm -hmm. You don't have to wait, have to, wait. to get to St. Mark. Yeah. Right. You don't have to wait to get to friendship. Yeah. Matter of fact, the redeemed know how to set something right in the car. Yeah. Yeah. The redeemer though that, watch this, don't mind shouting in all this. Yeah. Yeah. The redeemer though who don't mind praising God on your way out the house. The redeemer are those who don't mind shouting in spite of all you're going through. Now listen, I need some redeemed folk in here tonight that don't mind testifying Shout that home, thinking about God's goodness. Burn up my sweet potato, burn up my cornbread. But when it was all said and done, 
Ray B. By those who have the authority to say something. Listen tonight, church, let me drop this on you. If you've been redeemed, don't let nobody hush your praise. Listen, if you've been redeemed, listen, matter of fact, the devil is already mad. He, he been wanting the Lord to buy him with your praise anyway. But I need some faith tonight. That don't mind testifying. That don't mind shouting. That because the Lord brought me out of darkness. He brought me into the marvelous life. I got something to say. Y'all help me one more time. Look down your road and tell three people. I got something to say. Listen, let me ask you tonight, I got to run, but let me 
that shoe tonight, how did you come in? Because I've been redeemed, I've been released from the 
the hate and the enemy that you know tonight that the devil he should have had his way with you when he had his chance he should have got to when you were crying when you were confused and when you were going through chaos but listen tonight I need to tell you that the devil messed up y'all help me tell your neighbor he done messed up now he messed up because he let me get dressed he let me get to Bethel and now that I'm here I've discovered that I've got a reason I've got a reason to say something listen just seek your neighbor hand and tell him maybe you've been through too much to be silent because you've been redeemed from the hand of the enemy listen redeemed from her they know how to say it when they've been released that's the day they said in Psalm 34 and verse 1 he said I will bless the Lord at all at all times and his praises shall continue to be in my mouth the psalmist said Psalm 47 he said clap your hands on ye people shout unto God with the voice of
when I was preaching, uh, when you were whispering, uh, the lady looked at him and said, Sir, this man that's sitting next to me, he can't talk. Uh -huh, sir. And every time you said Jesus, oh, it was something on the inside of him. And he would look at me and, and just nod his head and tell me to make some noise. Listen, I got to go now, but I need some folk in here. You're not blind. You're not deaf. you got the activities of your lips. When you think about Jesus and what he done for you, you ought to make some noise. Crying. He's able 
to wipe all the tears from your weeping eyes. There's somebody here tonight. You have something to say. And if you are a sinner, a wretch undone, you got something to say. You can come now and say, Lord, I surrender my all unto thee. Yes. And how many of you know that if you ask Jesus to come in, come in. he will come in. Yes. Yes. He'll come in and he'll suck with you. Yes. And he'll make everything all right. Yes. If you're here tonight. Yes. And you've kind of been down in your spirit. Oh, yes. It looked like this world has tossed and turned you all manner of ways. I'm here to invite you to Jesus tonight. Yes. That bread of life. Yes. That lily in the back. Yes. That bright and morning star. Yes. If you're here tonight yes. and you're tired of talking about people lying on you, come to Jesus tonight. Yes. Don't you know Jesus will never lie on you? Yes. He'll never mistreat you. Yes. You know what he did for you and me? The Bible said while we were yet sinners, yes. Christ died for us. Oh, yes. Which means that one Friday, they took Jesus' account, nailed him in his hand, nailed him in his feet, pierced him in the side and put a crown of thorns up on his brow. And he hung there from the sixth to the ninth hour. And he died, not for himself, but he died for people you and me, uh, liars and backbiters and cheaters. He died for us. That we would have a right to the tree of life. So I know somebody there, you've been struggling. But I want you to know, he'll be shelter for you. He'll be a roof over your head. He'll be food for you when you're hungry. And if you're here tonight and you want to meet the blessed Savior, just come wherever you are. In that wonderful name of Jesus. 